Hey, it's Justin and Bethany from the Flack Fam, and today we are on the clock because we have a train to catch. Today we're taking you along as we travel the rails on the famous Napa Valley Wine Train. We booked the full day legacy experience, but there are many different options from wine tastings to evening dinner rides. So you should visit their website and see what appeals to you. This experience starts first thing in the morning with your arrival at the train station. After a short check-in where you will receive your boarding instructions, you are free to browse the store, relax in the lounge, or even start your day with a glass of wine right there in the station. Once they call your boarding group, you head outside and up the ramp where they will take your picture before you board. After boarding, you are greeted by your server and your maitre d' who immediately take you to your seat, in our case a dining booth with a glass of sparkling wine. After a quick introduction and a short set of instructions, most importantly the directions to the two restrooms on the train car, the train pulls away from the station and your server is bringing you your breakfast. A delicious riff on Eggs Benedict with a hash brown, avocado, smoked salmon, a poached egg, and hollandaise sauce. Though, because Bethany are the way we are, we asked for it without the salmon. Maybe we're boring. I don't think so. We like what we like. You mean like the side salad with the pork belly that was on the side of our Eggs Benedict? Yep, like that. After breakfast, we arrived at our first stop, the Welcome to Napa Valley sign. Smack in the middle of Napa Valley, oddly enough. We all gathered on an open-air train car to take pictures of the sign and get a little bit more detailed explanation of our itinerary and a bit of history on Napa Valley. Let me hear, and don't be shy about this one, let me hear, I'm here, my kids are not, and I'm very, very happy about that. By the way, the gift called there is the next station, so drink and enjoy this next 15 minutes of the call you got left. This was also the real beginning of our tasting journey, which started with a Chardonnay, not Bethany's favorite. Followed by a Rosé. Really not Bethany's favorite. And lastly, a Merlot that I did like. This was also the moment that we learned a fun fact about the Merlot market and how it almost didn't survive because of a piece of pop culture. Specifically, a random line from the movie Sideways featuring Paul Giamatti. And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot! Okay, okay, <laughs> relax, Miles. That one line destroyed Merlot cells, and only in the last year or so has it even bounced back. After wrapping up our first tasting, we were led back inside where we ordered lunch. Didn't we just eat breakfast? Well, they made sure you got your money's worth, for sure. We both chose the grilled tenderloin with parsnips puree, shallots, mushrooms, and bordelaise sauce. The tenderloin was cooked to perfection, which was quite amazing considering the kitchen was in a small room at the front end of our train car. This is a good point to mention that they also offer coffees, teas, soft drinks, and if you're so inclined and for an additional price, they have a full bar. This whole trip is timed perfectly because just as we finished lunch, we were arriving at our second stop, the Charles Krug Vineyard. As we exited the train, we were in a beautiful courtyard surrounded by gardens that were surrounded by row after row of grapevines. We took a short walk through the vineyards where we learned the history of how Charles Krug got his start and how the vineyard became what it is today. The grounds here are absolutely beautiful, but we didn't linger long because it was time to head inside and start the tasting. Here we were served a 2023 limited release rosé with strong notes of guava and tart strawberries. A 2021 limited release Syrah that tasted of dark berries and vanilla and a Zinfandel port that was rich and sweet, but surprisingly, not overly strong. On our way back to the train, the maitre d' pulled us aside and led just the two of us into the barrel room, which was stunning and smelled amazing. He let us video there for a minute before taking us to the members-only tasting lounge. We don't know why he did this, but we were really grateful for the experience. Just goes to show you should be nice to your hosts. It's true, because back on the train, they were serving us delicious Marin County Brie with local honey and olives topped with fennel pollen on toasted ciabatta. And he gave us a bit more of that Zinfandel pour because he heard how much you liked it. We're kind of glazing over that cheese plate, but it was absolutely amazing. 
I agree. If I wasn't already stuffed, I probably would have stolen yours as well. Well, then it's a good thing that we had made it to our last stop, Visa Tui, the sister property to Castilla de Amorosa, which we'll talk about in another video. But for now, let us tell you all about this vineyard. Visa Tui is one of only a couple of vineyards that will host private events, and they are very popular. The venue is booked out almost always a year in advance, if not more. We were led deep into the basement where tables were set up in the cellar surrounded by massive wooden barrels. The setting was absolutely beautiful. Here we had a host that preferred to go a bit off script. He selected the wines and told you stories about how the wine was made and the inspiration behind it. Because of this, we didn't get a ton of detail, but it was very entertaining. He started us off with a sparkling rosé and then moved to a cabernet that had strong pepper and herb notes. It wasn't our favorite. However, it was followed up with a Sangiovese that was so full of flavor that it made up for it. He also served you the Madeira. Yes, he did. Another treat from our maitre d. This was another fortified Zinfandel, slightly bolder and more flavorful than the one at Charles Krug. In fact, we ended up bringing a bottle home. That wasn't the only thing that our maitre d did here. He again pulled us aside and sent us down this beautiful aisle of wine barrels that only we were allowed to go in. It's true, he was amazing. At this point, we were done. We were completely full, but the day wasn't over because back on the train, we were about to order our final course of the day. Well, yeah, they can't send you home without dessert. For us, that was a chocolate lava cake, crumb brulee, and Irish coffee. After you finished your dessert, you're invited to join the maitre d' on the open air car for a dance party. However, we did not. We sat and talked about how much fun we were having and enjoyed the views as we headed back into the train station where we exited the train and our six hour trip came to an end. We absolutely loved the legacy experience on the Napa Valley wine train. It may not be your first idea of how to experience this beautiful place, but we think it's a fun and unique way to do it. If you're interested in learning more about the Napa Valley wine train and the other experiences they offer, visit their website at napavalleywinetrain.com Com. We think you're going to enjoy it. We certainly did. Thanks for sticking around to experience this with us. Before you go, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and maybe leave us a comment. Ask us a question or just say hello. Come back next week when we visit a couple of our favorite and most anticipated places, Frank Family Vineyards and Castilla de Amorosa. We'll see you then. Bye.